Well, another good day for everybody out there on YouTube and Facebook. My JVM here. Jack to my friends. Time for another truth nuke. I want to talk a little bit more about these clouds that I just brought up the other day. I want to talk some more about some other basic truths, okay? There's a lot of arguing going on, a lot of heated discussion, name calling, anger, resentment. So, how do we know that the earth is flat? I mean, how do we know? Well, number one, the horizon is the most basic fundamental truth that we can see. We can observe this anywhere we are. On a flat, infinite plane, the horizon line will always stay right at your eye level, every time. You cannot get high enough to escape it. You'll never have the horizon fall below you. That will only happen if we were on a ball. That's a truth. You can't deny that. Stand on the beach. Horizon at eye level. Lay down on the beach. Horizon at eye level. Get in an airplane. Horizon at eye level. Look at the Red Bull parachute jumper guy. I forget his name. But he opens the door and you see him from behind. You see him and then the doorway. And where's the horizon? Right there. Basic truth. Fundamental physical property. You can't escape it. Number two. We don't observe curvature anywhere on earth. Anywhere. Nowhere. A lot of people want to talk smack about, oh, well, I can see the horizon is curved. I can see it. Well, you can if you're using a GoPro or you're using a fisheye lens, then yes, you will all day long see a curve. But try not to forget that not only will you see a curve this way, as the camera moves, it will do this, and then it will do this. So you will see the horizon doing this as the camera moves. So are we to believe that your evidence of the curve also is evidence of an inverted curve as well? Common sense, critical thinking, questioning what you see, questioning what you're told. It's all we have to do. Basic fundamental number three. Water does not curve anywhere. Anywhere. We cannot make water curve. Now, I know you're going to argue with me, and I know you're going to say, well, we can use sound waves and electromagnetics, and we can make water that's coming out of a faucet bend. Yeah. Yep, sure can. Does that mean water is going to stay on a ball? Is that the same situation? Is it even the same scenario? You know it's not. Don't let people try to lie to you and use these lies as truths to convince you. Everyone out there wants to tell you they are an expert on the globe. Everybody's a PhD. Well, I know it's a globe. I know we've gone to space. I know, I know, I know. Okay, you know. Well, did you also know that they found the Mars rover in Greenland? Shocker. Wait, it's not actually on Mars? Sorry, Charlie. You cannot defend, NASA! You have no leg to stand on! Muha! Lies. Liars. Deception. The name of the game. When we put a telescope on the beach, and we look out across at the horizon, across the ocean. We instantly see all the ships and all the things out there on the horizon that we thought were 
over the horizon. So all you people out there, and I won't name any names, but you know who I'm talking to, you say, we can see ships going, falling away from us because they disappear over the horizon. And you will hold that and clutch it so tightly as if it is a fundamental. But then you will reject the fact that the horizon's at eye level. I mean, do you not see the folly of your ways? Do you not see the foolishness of the contradictions that you speak in the same breath? We cannot pass 110 kilometers up. Anybody out there at NASA, if you're watching this, I call you out. You can't stand in front of me for five minutes and have anything sensible to say to what I ask you. I will have you stammering and falling all over yourselves, period. And if you think I can't, take my challenge. Step up to me. Let's see what you got. Because you got that. Nothing. None of you. You can ignore the evidence all you want. That doesn't make it right. Just because you say it does not make it true. The only way we know something spoken is true is if we do our own investigation. When you look up at the sun any day of the week, and you've seen my videos, when you look at the moon any day of the week, you can see two basic things that's never going to change, no matter what. Those two basic things are, if the sun is in front of you, and you're looking up at it, and you look way past it, at the clouds, further away, and you can tell that the clouds are further away, we have eyeballs, we know distance, we know this. Our eyes don't lie to us. So, when you look at the sun, and you see the clouds way past, in front of you, well, what side of the clouds is lit up? If the sun's here, and the clouds are way here, that side of the sun, that side of the clouds are lit up. No? Go look, I'll wait. Okay, see that didn't take long, did it? Now, look to the left, look to the right. What do you see? Imagine a circle around the sun, and the clouds are making the circle. When you look in every direction, from the sun in an outward radius, every face that faces the sun is lit up. So that means in front of you, you see lit clouds. Turn around behind you, you see lit clouds. What? Look to the right, look to the left. The clouds are lit on the side facing the sun. Think critically. If the sun was 93 million miles away, would we observe this? Come on. Take a pillow. Take a book. Take a piece of paper. Take your phone. Take anything at all. And go up to a light. Turn all the other lights out. Hold it around the light in all directions and observe how the light lights up the object. Common Sense 101. I love it. We see the same thing with the moon. That's how we know it's not reflecting. I challenge anyone out there that doesn't believe what I'm saying. As strange as that sounds and as unbelievable as that sounds, that you can deny this, even though you can see it, but you'll still deny it. Well, if you do, show me a rock. Do an experiment. Pick any rock you want and put a light on it and see if it reflects. Common sense tells you right now that that's not gonna happen. But yet, the moon is supposed to be a rock. And it reflects like that. It reflects so much so that it's gonna light the clouds in a radius around it. Try this experiment. 
turn on a light bulb, get a paper towel or a piece of paper, something, even a cloth like this, hold it in front of you up against the light bulb. What do you see? You see the outline. Basically, you see the light bulb lit right behind it. And you see the same shape and the same size of the light bulb through whatever the item is you're holding up. So then, start pulling that away from the light source. And observe how the light goes like this and then washes out and becomes obscured. That's another truth. That's a recreatable truth. You cannot deny it. How close does a piece of paper, a cloth, a paper towel, how close does it have to be up against the source of light before the image of it gets washed out and distorted to where you can't tell the shape and size anymore? Not very far, which supports the evidence. The sun and the moon are inside the dome that Admiral Byrd found in the 1950s. The sun and the moon are in proximity to the clouds. The clouds themselves I mean, look at them any day, any day of the week. You see them get huge and swollen. So why don't they get scorched? Why don't they burn? Why don't they catch on fire? Oh, because they're water vapor. Okay, so why don't they evaporate? So I had a buddy of mine, and he's a good friend of mine. I love him to death. But he said to me, well, the clouds will the clouds will rain, but then the, the, the wind pushes the drops back up in the air into the clouds where they gather more vapor together and turn into bigger drops and then fall and go up and down and up and down and up and down until finally they're so heavy that they just fall down. Does that really make any sense? When we look in the distance and we see rain, we see rain, don't we? We see. We see water obscuring the air, the atmosphere. We see the pattern, the rain coming down. Do we ever see that same pattern stay up at the top? And I mean, we would see that, no? Well, yes, of course we would see that. How could we not? How could we not see drops going up and down and up and down? This, this magic vertical ping pong happening in the sky. Impossible. The clouds hold the rain. They are just as supernatural as the sun and the moon. That's why when the sun is inside the clouds and you see the rays coming out and you draw that equilateral triangle using the sun rays, we know we can finish the rest of the triangle. What's at the top? The source of light. The sun. Another just physical truth new. The clouds don't evaporate. How hot's the sun gotta be? But they don't burn up. They don't evaporate. They don't scorch. They don't steam. The water doesn't go... Pshh. We just don't see it, do we? Making sense yet? The idea here is to get you to think, question what you're told, hold it up against what you see. Science tells us, if you have a theory, you must be able to do testing on that theory to decide whether or not it's truth. If the evidence does not hold up for any one part of your theory, then you must take the whole theory and throw it out. Period. It's called the scientific method, boys and girls.
will use your science laws against you because you cannot stand with a lie against the truth. You cannot do it. Here's another fundamental. Look at the frenzy of activity going on with aliens. It's ridiculous. Look at what's happening. Oh, aliens, oh, I'd welcome them. Oh, I would baptize them. From the mouth of the Pope, the eighth king of Revelation. Getting us to accept the idea that we're not alone. And what is that? What is the whole reason behind it? The very basic question, when you come at any of today's problems, politically, society, any of them, religion, no matter where you come from, all questions lead back to the Vatican. Sorry, they're not Christian. If you think they're Christian, you're wrong. And you're dead wrong. The Vatican is only superficially plausible as Christian. Any further investigation beyond skin deep and Christianity falls apart in relation to the Vatican because they are not Christian. They are pagan, sun-worshipping, Satan-worshippers. Period. Try this. Go to YouTube. Put in Easter, Easter Mass Vatican 2015 and see what song they are singing. And more importantly, who they're singing about. I think your eyes will be opened. They sing about Satan in the church. The Vatican is the same organization that's been behind every mass genocide in history. And yet they are Christians. The Pope said, it is a dangerous and reckless thing to do to try and have a personal relationship with Jesus. There is no way to have a personal relationship with Jesus unless you come through the church and have us mediated. That is an opposite, a polar opposite of the Bible. The Bible speaks over and over again. The earth is fixed, immovable, unable to be moved shall not be moved. God said, and, I, and the firmaments were spread out across the earth, over the earth, as a tent to cover the earth. Can we do that on a ball? Nope. Circle and ball are two different things. I love it when atheists try to say to me, well, in Isaiah, it says, He who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And I say, yes, circle of the earth. So if I hold a hoop, like a hoop earring, and I hold a tennis ball in the other hand, and I say, pick the circle. Yeah, smart asses out there, you're going to say, oh, well, the ball's a circle. Okay. A ball is a three-dimensional circle. Sure. It's a ball. It's not called a circle. Duh. Do we not have a dictionary? <laughs> I mean, if we don't use the dictionary to tell us the meanings of words, then who defines the words? Do we just define them randomly? So then, I could go ahead and I could be like, I get in a big fight with my girlfriend and I could be like, Oh, she kicked me in the circles! What? Get out of here. What are you, insane? Hey, let's go play soccer. Um, let me go grab the soccer circle. You look at me like I'm nuts, right? Because that would be nuts. A circle is not a ball. Come on. Do you look at a coin and think that's a ball? <laughs> Fundamental critical thinking, people. A tire is a circle. It's not a ball. So, 
I think I'm about talked out now. Um, I want you to consider carefully everything I've said and use your brain. God gave us eyes to see. He gave us a brain to understand. We don't feel movement. We don't feel a thousand mile an hour spin. It's just not possible. The lies are so obvious as lies once you start looking. Heaven and hell are real. I don't want anybody going to hell. You don't want to go there. You're going to be dead a lot longer than you're alive. All right, so I'm going to close this with, uh, with a little joke. And I hope I can tell it right. Just a little one-liner. So, my teacher, she told me to turn in my essay today. But I said, oh no, I ain't no snitch. Uh, <laughs> All right, that's enough for today. See you guys later. Peace.